Hey, hello, this is Martin from Secrets, the channel for learning about trading and investing. Welcome to the weekly stock market analysis show, markets next week, and this is for Monday, tomorrow, October, the week that's starting from tomorrow, basically, October 30th, 2023. So if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and um, share it others so that it will reach out to more people. Thank you so much. Let's get in the charts. So this is a weekly view. We have been seeing this since quite time, some time, and um, it's a rounding pattern breakout that had happened. It had multiple flag breakouts, but finally, we are seeing that the, the third flag breakout did not work as expected, and it has failed and then reversed and fallen below the 20 weekly exponential moving average as well on both indices. Bank of also, it's a flag breakout that failed to the last one. And then still it's holding above the rounding pattern breakout. So you can say the rally is not fizzled out completely. This is another view, a parallel trend line channel that you're seeing for the Nifty on the left side, right side, the bank Nifty. We clearly see that it's still within that trend line channel and we could also see that the 50 Fibonacci extension should be breached for the price to fall below. Uh, uh, the bottom of the channel which may be near to 18,000 so the, that's that's where the scope of the fall further may uh, end up with. In the bank Nifty also you can see the trend line channel is there with the Fibonacci retracement of the 50 has already happened and we need to be really worried if the Fibonacci 60 extension not retracement if I said that sorry about that so Fibonacci extension 60 also is breached then we have a problem and uh, if that is maintained then that could be a bounce zone or a support zone because that's the end of the channel parallel channel on the weekly on the bank of tea. so that's what that's that's the trend line channel view and this one is the, the breakout uh, which finally got uh, uh, Walker as expected right uh, where we have ended up with this 7 to 9% 9, 9 of correction respectively from the prices. This is the daily charts view. You can clearly see that there is a parallel channel and also a rectangular box pattern on the Nifty on the left side. And it is beautifully taken support of the 20 expansion moving average, which also has a gap very close by. Right? That's yeah, so that's somewhere at the zone of 18. Uh, 1800 nearby so that's that's what uh, indices have taken a bounce on Friday and the bank also daily chance you can see that an attempt to reverse has happened but uh, the 20, 200 expense moving average had breached and um, support wise if you see we have breached the trend line we have breached the moving averages all of them 20 50 100 and 200 expense moving averages on the Nifty. It's a very weak picture there on the bank especially. But 200 uh, day expense moving average support will be something for the bulls to be hopping for. This is the candlestick wise view. You can see that uh, it's a big move, big fall that has happened. Finally, Nifty managed to close about the 90k in the week to week basis. And Nifty and Bank Nifty has formed a wide range bearish candle, red candle, which has seen some kind of support. In a previous resistance zone, you know, which broke out in July or something, and it has taken so there is a chance of change in priority weekly because it's it's, it's supports on both indices, you can say. But the candlestick pattern that has formed this is clearly vertical fall since last two weeks, and it's bearish for sure. This is the daily candlestick that you can see. So, Friday. After three days of continuous fall or six, seven days of continuous fall, last three days especially was vertical and Friday we see that it gapped up and then closed the previous gap that happened on Thursday. So that's something positive uh, which gives hopes again just like the 200 expansion moving average on the Nifty. It gives hope for the bulls that the bottom has been found. You never know that. The breach of uh, the neckline has already been slightly breached but not completely confirmed yet 
for the M pattern you're talking about on the Nifty. But a lot of support bridge. Three months of consolidation is what is happening here. Three months or more. So that has entered and it has fallen heavily, sharply, vertically. And Friday's candlestick is clearly bullish. Wide range bullish candle. And we have a wide range bearish weekly candle and a wide range bullish candle. So you're still back to the question whether this was a dead cat pounds or is it a real attempt where the bottom was found and then market is trying to reverse or not. You never know that. This is the Bollinger Band view. Suddenly, after a long time, we can see that the expansion of the Bollinger Bands has happened on the downside, which is clearly bearish. And Bank of the, the expansion of the downside on the Bollinger Bands is even more evident, even more bearish. So, clear bearishness is evident, clear bearish bias is there, you know, which could indicate that more falls can come in unless there's any signals of the contraction comes in at the stage on the daily Bollinger Bands of. Nifty on the left side and magnet on the right side. Before getting into the support resistance zones, just let's just wrap up the numbers. So it was a two and a half percent nearly, you know, 400 points nearly down move, negative move that has happened with the point and bearish candle, and a correction of seven percent has already happened. Remember, we have broken out with a 20 percent plus rally from rounding patterns, cup flag patterns, and all that. The bank Nifty also has taken an equally big hit uh, since last two weeks. 2.16, that's nearly 950, nearly 1000 points gone in a week. Right? And it's a wide range bearish candle form there as well. And the total correction from the top all has now extended to 9%. Remember, we are, we are having a 20 plus percentage of rally in Bank Nifty also when Brockwood happened with multiple flag and rolling patterns. Now the daily charts we can see that it is a positive contrary to the weekly that Friday's attempt to reverse shows a one percent up move. Again more than one percent up for the bank of the also the final points up and a bullish hash pro gap candle is what is stormed. But Nifty as whole is holding the two hundred exponential moving average with bank Nifty has lost all of the exponential moving average on the daily charts. So basically it's a vertical fall down for three straight Days and an attempt on a final reversal. Right. So the question is, is it fall of modem or is it a dead cat bounce that's going to fizzle out and then lead to further fall? Well, the demands we have already seen there is downside expansion indicating more bearishness to come. Let's get into the support resistance zones. This is for the Nifty. You can clearly see that um, the clear support now would be 18787. A bridge of that could take to 100 points down 1877. Then 18,700 rounding number, 18,600, 18,473, 18,300, 18,400 for rounding number above that, 18,200 and 18,060 zones. So some solid supports can be found near that 18k with respect to Fibonacci. On the upside, the gap has been closed. That happened on Thursday, um, Wednesday. So Wednesday's gap is closed as possible. A bullish candle has formed. So the first resistance on the upside would uh, no, uh, holding the you know, so support would be 90,000 first, and then below that, only the 200 expansion moving average, you know, 18, 800 comes in. But resistance first would, wow, would be the 1915, 19, then the 100 exponential moving average, 19,300, 19,300, so anything above 19,500 is hopeful because we would, you know, conquer the, you know, the exponential moving average is sort of 20, and then you have the hurdles as 19,650, 19,726, 19,805, 19,870, which is a major major gap persistence up there. So that's that's how it is. All of these are rounding numbers or previous in highs or exponential moving averages or gaps. That's how the levels are formed. Now look at the bank Nifty. It has breached the 200 expansion moving average already, you know, multiple days before, and the first support now, you no, know, the first support now could be seen at the uh, 43, 42,000, 42,800 is where the price is right now. 
the 42,000 rounding number to good support, then 41,671, 40,700, 40,200, 40,000 has got a good support, which is the gap or area also. Now, the first resistance, real resistance that it's going to have is to clear the 43,000 43, rounding number and then 43,400, then 40,600 and then 43,800. 43,400 is a 200 expansion moving average. So that will be the major, major hurdle after the 43,000 is cleared. Then comes the 200, the, the 20 expansion moving average at 43,800, 43, 44,200 uh, and 44,000 is going to be major uh, resistance and 44,200 would be 100 expansion moving average and 44,251 is a 50 expense moving average so 44500 rounding number would come in so once 44500 is cleared then probably you may be heading back to the continuation rally but that's nearly 2000 points away and we don't know whether you know how slow or fast we're going to do the reflow the plans down so we already seen that 40,000 nearby is weather so so the range is pretty wide no but that's what here again supper resistance would Considered would be based on gaps, the previous few high lows, moving averages, no? Fibonacci window gaps, and all this. Thing. So, making all of these levels and correlate that the open interest, and then you know, we can know where we can enter an exit. So, another study of the momentum and the trend indicators as per the ADX for the trend and the momentum RSI indicator weekly and the multi time frame weekly and the daily charts. The nifty and the bounce. The left side, you have the weekly, which indicates that. We have set from the side on the medium term with uh, the trend indicators having crossed over to the bear zones right with the falling strength and you know, mixed back but we have crossed over so medium term bearishness has come in as far as the trend is concerned medium term bearishness is also there on the daily time frames on shorter time frames on both the lines as far as trend is concerned rsi clearly bearish and rising seen on the daily charts but RSI is still sideways on both the indices on the medium term, right? That's what you're saying. Nifty is bearish on trend and momentum, right? So that's just a natural summary of this, right? With respect to the ADX, which is the trend indicator and RSI the momentum indicator. Let's look at the volatility in the operators analysis. The VIX, this is very interesting fact. It is spiked up less than 1% despite the fact that we have such a huge crash. Right now, can you believe that VIX is less than 11? Still the low volatility range. This is quite unusual. Does that mean that we have less fear in the market? No. This is a change in the market has happened uh, very recently with a large number of you know, the expiry option players has come in and the real fear in the market is not reflecting in the India fix as of now because of this huge number of players probably but the fear is there in the market it is um, it is heavy selling by the fires that has happened last week they went into sell nearly 7,500 8,000 crores per day kind of selling was what I've seen um, yeah so this is uh, uh, a puzzling thing that the India VIX is at very low. So when it is at very low, the Canada volatility spikes up from 10 to 12, it's big moves that happen. So that way, intraday volatilities are very high while the market remains in low volatility reaching even when the market. So there is some contradiction that uh, in the puzzle that uh, would uh, know, evolve uh, to get resolved probably in the coming days but as if now because of this Friday's move uh, open interest on the futures has short covering built up that has happened which is bullish nature so definitely the candlestick also is bullish so uh, uh, no, that's another hope apart from the 20 ex 200 expansion moving average support uh, the, 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 in the change in polarity support zone and this is the short covering in the futures why that's another hope for the more for the bulls here but November 2, 2nd and 3rd weekly expiries, the levels of the PCR is also not that bearish yet, no, but not bullish either. It's 0.81 on Nifty and it's 0.92, which is very close to the positive one factor one. It's very close to bullish, but not bullish yet, not bearish either. So 
that's why we are interested in the operant interest data as well. So let's look at the options for the weekly uh, operant interest details from the Diffin Bank we are seen. So the levels that we have is very na narrow. So option call writers and put writers as think you know, which are the big players are given a very narrow range where the support notice is found. It's between 19,000 and 90,200 and this is the highest put and call writing is and the second highest is seen at 18,000 and 800 and 19,500 and again not uh, the second level of support resistance seen is quite large for this is for the nifty that we talk about the bank nifty it's 42,000 and 43,000 it's a very very narrow 500 point range for the bank nifty where the highest put and call writing is seen and 40,000 and 44,000 is where the second highest put and call writing is seen and the rest of the details on the future so overall you can see that you know futures options have a very tight range of interest in PCR is not bullish enough and uh, we have a short covering on the future soil that happened and the build up that happened on. so overall you cannot say it's bearish on the open interest side let's have a look at the different sectors the IT sector it is not just the IT sector it's it's across the sector big crash down that has happened look at this ID 2.7% Metal 3.88% down, auto sector 2% down, pharma sector 2.4% down, FMCG less than 1% down, reality 2.7%. So big fall across the sector, and none of the sectors are bullish enough on both time frames of weekly and daily. So you cannot just have to stay out. Right? Uh, unless I'm, uh, the support of 200 expense moving average is breached. It may not be important to take short trades as well uh, with that conference sector for specific stock specific across the sector. Bearishness also has not fully come in because you can see that there is some bullishness still left in the auto sector on the medium term. There is sideways movement still happening in the pharma. There is sideways still in the FMCG. There is bullishness still there on the medium term on the reality. Can you believe it? Okay. So now the sectors have completely fallen on the medium term to the bearishness. It's just still side, it's still hop is there, but not a time to take long positions as of now. Across the sector fall has happened. This is a confirmation of that. The different sectorial indices, analysis, charts are what, what's that see. You can see that the slip in the IT medium term is sideways, the slip in the sideways on the metal, the slip in the side. Oh, the only sector that's not slipped in the sideways is probably auto. The auto sector still holding all the bullishness in the medium term, and there is a divergence also seen there, which gives potential up more possibility. So auto is still holding on to the top, pharma, which is so also good during the uh, long falls, as also seems to have slipped in the sideways moment from the medium term. From CG, from CG has. Uh, Yeah, sorry, there is a call that is coming. Sorry about that. So that's for pharma. Pharma is also slipped. So FMCG also has slipped in the sideways. You can see that we supposedly have that moving further down to the bottom of the channel. Reality uh, shows that it also oh made its reality also made it just like the auto in the moment of the medium term, which is having a bullish divergence as well. So reality and auto holding the bullish of the medium term, others are all slipped in the sideways, right? So it's you know, naturally you can say it's, it's still sideways, not only the bear zones, but the moment of the bull side is gone now across the sector because of the last week's fall. Now, what we are analyzing is a few set of stocks that contribute maximum to the indices, and here we have the HDFC, which is major cause of concern, which brought which is majority of concern, majority of the contribution to the indices, and it has fallen big time last week, right. A big fall from the you no know, towards the 1469 from the 1550 nearby. So, nearly 100 points or some loss in just a matter of one week. And it looks like this, it's a battle channel and you're heading towards, towards the bottom of now near 1300. Momentum in the medium term have slipped in the beer zones. Right? Can you believe that? It's, it's fundamentally such a big such a good quality stock has fallen into the peer zones and that's the reason why market cannot hold despite the fact that there is there's a lot of buying that's coming from mutual funds and all that despite that you know the biggest bank biggest contributor of the dice which contributed nearly 15 percent to the dice 
uh, has turned bearish with this, the momentum and the trend indicators on the medium term weekly charts. Now here we have the lines, the second highest seems to be falling further down towards the 2000 zones and momentum has slipped to the sideways heading towards the RSI 40 support and the trend has crossed over to the bear zones and rising. The third ICSD bank also has, from the all-time high seems to be collecting heading towards the bottom of the channel when the momentum has slipped in the sideways and heading towards the bottom RSI 40 and the trend has crossed over here soon. So SDFC has got, the Chichi bank has got it, huh? it has contributed slipping here soon. So it's, it's, it's a concern. Now the ID stocks which used to perform, which is hold marked you know there is a crash or there, there is a retracement, has finally slipped into the sideways zones and heading south. We both have a parallel channel then it seems like the bottom of the channel is where it is heading towards. Kodak Bank has been consolidating zigzag but that also has fallen almost towards the bear zones and trend is bearish. It is is holding on but sideways is what retracement is what is happening but in a very slow way. So overall we have a huge bank, huge uh, index heavy stock that has gone to bear zones and others are all heading towards the sideways support at RSI 40. Right. That's what we are. Let's try to analyze the institutional participation. So, all our FIFs have sold a humongous 13,200 crores in the last one week alone. That's the 14th week, not the 13th. It's a, it's a 14th or 15th week of consecutive selling, non stop selling. And DS have tried to buy huge quantity at a cheap price, 11,550 crores. but still you cannot catch up with the FIS selling. So what brought down the market such a sharp, such sharply is the FIA holdings and FIA has also sold HDFC bank major and all the index heavy stocks, you know, the thick stocks are the top five most contributing, these were the selling as it could happen, not in the mid cap or the small cap. That's where the investments are coming from the mutual fund problem. Yeah. So that's how we, the institutional participation is worried, especially for institutions. So when there is US yield that's rising up, 10 year yield is rising up to you know, 15 year high levels, then there is no doubt that money will get pulled out from a market and then it goes back to the native home country. That's what is happening, the FIS is selling heavy and we have trouble. Let's now analyze the different global markets and the different global commodities and the currencies. Starting with the currencies, the dollar is uh, spiked up for 4% as a half percent and it's it's a seven person up move that we are seeing. It's a cup and hand. You can see in the charts and it's breaking out and heading north. It's having a bullish momentum. And rupee, the currency pair used in our also has uh, currency pair has also has moved up. It's not plus. It's not uh, minus. It's plus. Sorry about that. So currency. Pair used the IR is should up. That means the rupee is uh, still remaining weak. 83.24. Can you believe that? If there was no RBN dimension, it would have shoot up and then you know go on to the top of the channel. But it has been consolidating this, uh, there since several months now in an ascending wedge at the top edge of that breakout zone. Anything would happen. How long would that be uh, intervene to keep the price in there? But dollar is shooting up, yields are going high, the rupee is weak. That's not great news with respect to the currency. Crude oil, oil is very key factor in our economy like ours. The majority of our oil consumption is through after getting in water from different countries. And we had hit the top of the channel at 93 zones and then small down was happening to hit a resistance zone, which is good. And hope it comes down and starts breaking out of the channel. So we have a spiking crude, which is not that great news, but some cool off has happened last week, which is a relief. Now look at this. This is interesting. So we have a huge breakout in the gold price, which happened in the COVID times. Then we had another one in the Ukraine war started, and then we have an Israel Hamas war that's happening, and then we have another spike out towards the all time high. That's exactly what is happening. The momentum is climbed to the bull zones, trend has crossed over to the bull zones and we have people shifting money to safe levels like gold when the market is crashing. That's what you're seeing. All it is a hedging instrument. So let's just analyze the US markets also. Some other market. 
we have seen huge fall down after hitting the resistance at the top of the descending wedge and it has almost slipped into the bear zones on the medium term charts with trend clearly in the bear zone crossed over from the medium term. That's the case with Dow Jones, at the same case with Nasdaq also, that's the same with this and p also, all have slipped slightly in the bear zones for on the medium term, which is a concern. Okay. US is the mother markets, but all the markets are dependent on the dollar and the US markets, and it has, it is falling down continuously since now several several weeks because of the recession, because of the war and all this uncertainties. And you know, it, it, uh, our market has fallen only this much is itself is a good thing, despite the fact that the global markets are weak. So that's the summary. Let's just wrap up. So currency is weak, although we have, uh, you know, uh, we, are, uh, we have kept that control at one uh, level with respect to the rupee is concerned. Currency, the rupee is weak, dollar is spiking up, coal is cold out uh, after hitting resistance, but still on the top and spiking. Coal is uh, about to hit all time highs, and US markets are in trouble with the red continuously and falling down after hitting the resistance on a descending wedge. So that's a summary, right? Not good news with respect to the global markets, currencies and commodities. Let's just get into actionables now after the analysis of stock picks too. PD light industries as a trend line breach, momentum breach in the bear zones, trend cross over in the bear zones and there is every like loot which can go to the bottom of this support zone. So with the type stop loss two candles high we can take this bet on a short short trade opportunity swing trade short swing trade now HDFC bank I know it's a fundamentally great stock to invest but when the charts are screaming at you and saying that it is found to the beer zone on the weekly and the daily that's probably the time to take a trade as especially when the trend on the medium term also has fallen cost over into the beer zones absolutely very tight stop loss as we put the top of the candle, entry candle is high and uh, it could be rewarding if you trail it properly just towards the bottom. You cannot fall from here. No, 300 is probably the bottom, right? So that's uh, also the bottom of the box pattern. So that small trade can be attempted on the short side, no problems in that. But otherwise, I agree with you that fundamentals are quality. So, but you have to believe the technical charts as long as you are a trader. Now this is a pair of actionable. It's a calendar spread. It's a beer call spread, and basically you are selling a 19350 call, and then taking a hedge for the next week. That's a week of November 9th, 19600 call. By hedging, it completely completely risk defined, very low capital requirements, and range is beautiful, 18683 and 19403. The reward maybe less, but yeah, no, it's completely risk defined. You can increase the capital set as per your appetite. And the wicks and all these things, but yeah, this is a trade opportunity that's there right now. But if you go for the non directional strategies, it may be risky uh, when the market is nose diving, you know, you may not get enough time to cover here. Get out of you may not need to adjust, you know, if you're not an expert, uh, just get out if it breaches. So, you can if there is a fall that happens, you're not going to lose much. Is that part of this? And if you're going to get then. Uh, we are getting a reasonable risk uh, reward if you're getting out you no know, before the expiry day you no know, one or two percent should be the target not more than that right? but technically if you see the risk reward is not that great but you know, we, we have to get out at one or two percent only you know, consistent small profit is what an option sellings and option strategies gives you, you no know, not option buying option buying is used here as a hedge so that's a payoff of a nifty weekly option strategy that you're seeing that this is wrap up things after the analysis and actionables and all that. This is the sum and substance of what we have been analyzing so last week. Markets fell sharply, we breached major support zones and it closed completely red with the correction extending the dice on 79%. And Friday it saw a uh, item to bounce. We don't know whether it's a dead cat bounce or is it reversal. But, you know, we just have not got a confirmation except the fact that the gap on the Venice Thursday's fall has been covered and uh, we still have to remember that we are a non-going rally of 20% plus 
The fact remains that the fires have intensified the sell off. The US and ISIS have fallen very sharply, and we have a peak coupe, a spiking oil, and a purish calistic patterns, whatnot. Fallen momentum, fallen trend in the beer zones. PCR is not that bullish enough. Orange bands are absolutely you know, very bad shop downside expanding. And we have a consolidation of three months, just given a clear breach breakdown. And this all gives hopes for the bears who expect to get some more on the downside. Some more. And Fred has move. We don't know if, if that is not a little can, that can bounce, then you know, uh, we have brought back some moment of the one person boom on the dice that happened on Friday. Futures open interest is short, it's a short covering, but up. So probably it may continue. And the PCR is not bearish at all, it's not bullish enough, but it's not bearish. And there is a change in polarity bounce possibilities. The 200 expansion moving average is not lost with Nifty. So, there are factors that could give hopes that the worst is over. No, no, but in a sub summary, you can see that the markets fell sharp, bridging with the supports and then slipped in the BL zone for short term. All eyes would be whether this end of this correction or is it a fall that is further going to expand on the downside. But the view for the next weeks is more right, bearish views that I have. The global Q's recession, the recession fear, the war fear, the inflation, interest rate, all these worries are there which could get escalated anytime and then a black sands could come in. So be careful about that. The levels for the next week could be 18,400 and 19,500 on the Nifty and the 41,000 and 44,500 for the Bank Nifty. So, as long as this 19,000 and 44,000 is not conquered back, we don't have any hope for a recovery. Right? We'll be bearish, mostly, not even consulted. So, all we can do is protect our capital. How do we do that? Especially for trading derivatives and options, hedge your positions, if you're in stock, hedge your positions with bonds and uh, gold and other things. If you're equity investor, if you're derivative investor, use hedges by non directional strategies, broker spreads, and buying options along with the selling. Do not have overnight naked options selling. Right? That's all in our hands. And cut short portions like the VIX is spiking. The VIX is behaving unusual given the fact that the market has fallen down, which gives a hope at the same time confusion. Because it doesn't happen since a long time. The VIX does not spike enough. With respect to the fall in the market, so just slightly confusing. But if at all you see that the spike is 10 percent, 12 percent, then stay out of it because no certain should be here. And if it is spiking above 15 20, absolutely cut short drastically your portion size, right? Intra level size is big this high. So protect your capital and stay safe, trade safe. So here we, if you are not subscribed, watching this, and if you are not subscribed, please subscribe and share your friends and colleagues and share, like if you like it. and comment and give us feedback for us to improve and become social media channels where we post technical charts daily so subscribe to that as well we plan to have daily analysis from next month onwards so check out that as well where we have daily week coming videos subscribe if you're not subscribed and share to friends and colleagues thanks for watching happy trading happy learning bye bye